Hello aspirants, looking at current affairs for 29th November. These are the five news items which we have picked up from the Hindu today. The first one is, text defaulters get another chance. So this is, the center has introduced a bill in the Lok Sabha in this present winter session, which seeks to amend the Income Tax Act of 1961. So significant provision under this bill is that imposition of 50% tax will take place on undeclared income that is voluntarily declared till 30th December 2016. If the income tax authorities detect undeclared income post this date, then the taxation rate would be 75% plus 10% penalty on this tax. Means 75 plus 10% of 75, 7.5 is equal to 82.5 so this will be the effective tax rate so this is the provision also the proceeds under this voluntary income disclosure scheme will go into Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana so this Yojana would be put forth and the funds under this will be used to fund schemes for providing irrigation housing toilet infrastructure primary education healthcare facilities and livelihood to the poor so this is the plan also, all this voluntary disclosed income, this person would not be prosecuted under wealth tax, other civil laws and taxation laws. So, you will be immune from all these laws. But such undeclared income will not get immunity from FEMA, PMLA. FEMA is Foreign Exchange Management Act, Prevention of Money Laundering Act, Narcotics and Black Money Act. So, if you are having charges under this, then there will be no immunity. So, that is there. Plus, then another provision is that this Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana will become part of Finance Act of 2016. So this will be the Yojana put forth, which will be used to fund schemes. This is regarding the income tax slabs. So in 2015-16, these income tax slabs will generally come out with the budget. So presently, there are no special provisions for women. So general category includes all men and women except the non-senior citizens. So senior citizens are further segregated into two categories, 60 to 80 and above 80, 80 and above. So below 80 and then 80 and above is very senior citizens. So tax labs are up to 2.5 lakh. It is nil. You are not uh, charged any tax. 2.5 to 3 lakh beyond 2.5 to 3 lakh it is 10 percent on general category senior and very senior citizens are exempted 3 lakh to 5 lakh it is 10 percent taxation rate only very senior citizen category is exempted and 5 lakh to 10 lakh is 20 percent for all means above 5 lakh your income will be taxed at 20 percent tax rate and above 10 lakh for all categories everyone if the taxation rate would be 30 percent so these are this was a new tax lab which came up in 2015-16 then the next news item is center asked to frame incentive policy for scrapping vehicles national green tribunal ngt is an environment tribunal in india it is chaired by justice swatantra kumar presently so, this tribunal had passed an order in 2014 banning all petrol and diesel vehicles which are more than 15 years old from plying in Delhi NCR, National Capital Region. So, we keep hearing of pollution levels being high in the north, northern India, especially in Delhi. So, these initiatives have been taken. In 2015, National Green Tribunal also passed an order upgrading its previous order it said that all diesel vehicles which are more than 10 years old will be banned from flying in Delhi and Seattle. Mm -hmm. So this order has to be implemented. It was also challenged in the Supreme Court but the Supreme Court upheld the National Green Tribunal's order. So in July 2016 also NGT passed orders asking Delhi government to pick, put its order into effect cancelling licenses of registrations of all diesel powered vehicles which are more than 10 years old. So presently too the National Green Tribunal is saying that it's more than a year since the order has been passed but nothing has been done yet. So this initiative has to be implemented by Delhi government as well as the central government. It has asked the Ministry of Heavy Industries to frame a policy which will incentivize scrapping of such old diesel vehicles, 10 year old, more than 10 year old diesel vehicles. So there should be some incentive so that such vehicles are scrapped. So such a policy has to be framed expeditiously, quickly is what the center, NGT is asking the center to do. Also it has asked that uh, land needs to be identified in border areas where these banned vehicles can be parked. 
because they cannot be run in MCR region, then where should they go? So there should be some region for them, some place allotted for them to be parked at least. So that is there. Plus also it has asked the Delhi government to take immediate steps to improve public transport system. How can the capping of vehicles take place? Less number of vehicles on Delhi roads. How can that become effective is also being discussed. The National Green Tribunal is asking the Delhi government to look into such initiatives. It had also spoken about the odd even initiative of Delhi government which it said that the ambient air quality levels did not improve after its implementation. So that was not sufficient. Also it's asking for immediate steps to improve the public transport system by bringing in buses running on CNG, hybrid or even electric buses. So initiatives need to be taken in this matter. So this is about the NGT orders and suggestions given. Then the next news item is no nod for using Russian aircraft for QSAT project. QSAT is Cochin University of Science and Technology. It had earlier developed stratosphere troposphere radar, ST radar. So it was an indigenously developed radar also upheld by the central government under its Make in India initiative. So presently the project which is which QSAT is part of is Stratoclim project. So Stratoclim project is to study the role of upper troposphere and stratosphere in climate change and it involves 28 research institutes from 11 countries. So this troposphere, stratosphere these are various layers of atmosphere. So this is a little of geography here you can see the lithosphere the earth's surface and then comes the troposphere so above the earth's surface the air atmosphere is comprising of lowermost layer troposphere up to 10 kilometers this is where the majority of the climatic conditions take place and comes the upper troposphere and the stratosphere where even the ozone layer is located then the mesosphere and thermosphere so this upper troposphere and stratosphere is to be studied so th this is an aircraft which will be used this is a russian made aircraft m55 geophysica so this aircraft can carry 1500 kg of sensors and it is a single seater aircraft it is a former russian spy plane so this aircraft was seeking permission to fly over indian skies to study the upper troposphere and stratosphere characteristics to understand the impact of Indian monsoon convection on these layers. So this has been rejected. The proposal of fly, uh, this aircraft's flying is rejected by the Ministry of Civil Aviation on security and defense concerns. So this is in use. So because now it is a single seater aircraft so there can be no Indian personnel also part of this. You can under, look into what this aircraft uh, what conduct of this activity of these aircraft so that is the reason why it has been rejected also this st radar was supposed to be part of stratoclim project also so we have to wait and watch what happens on this matter too presently the proposal is rejected so that is in news so this is about the qsat radar too the stratosphere troposphere radar of cochin university of science and technology then the next news item is Syrian army seizes northeast Aleppo. So Aleppo is in Syria. This gives you the complete map of Syria and Iraq which are neighbors. So Mosul you can see all these pink regions are Islamic state controlled regions. This green region is under Iraqi government. This is Iraq. Then this is Syria Islamic state controlled region. The blue region is under Syrian government and these these regions are under Iraqi Kurdish forces and these purple regions which you see here are Syrian rebel forces which are against Syrian government. So Syrian government is led by Bashar al-Assad. He is supported by Russia. The Syrian rebels are supported by US and the western powers. So that is the complexity plus the Islamic state is against Bashar al-Assad and the US is also against Bashar al-Assad. So the complexities can be clearly seen here. So presently the Syrian rebels and the Syrian government were also fighting against each other. But then a truce, a ceasefire was brought in by both USA and Russia coming on board, working together. But the ceasefire lasted for only three days. It was just in last month only in October. But then after this ceasefire also collapsed, the fighting has increased. And presently the news is that Syrian rebels have lost 
the control over Aleppo region. So Aleppo is here. So see, you can see blue is Syrian government, purple is Syrian rebels. So they have lost control and Syrian government, Bashar al-Assad's government supported by Russia have been able to gather more area under their control. So this is their, ex there is the exodus of desperate civilians. So civilians are fleeing from this region. Exodus means going out of the region. So the Aleppo had been held by the opposition Syrian rebels since 2012. So now it is in some time that it will go back into the Bashar al-Assad government's help. So this is possible only because Russia is backing Bashar al-Assad and this had it has backed it since September 2015. So then opposed that it had gained made various advances in Syria. So Syrian codes are another body, another entity in this complex battleground and the Syrian Kurds are officially aligned with neither the government nor the rebels but the opposition views them as effectively aligned with the Bashar al-Assad government in their cap in the capturing of Aleppo because another thing is that Syrian government is Shia and uh, the Kurds are also sh majorly Shias but then the Islamic state is Sunni Plus the Syrian rebels are also Sunni. Aleppo is also having Sunni population. It's Sunni majority region. So also this Sunni Shia conflict complicates the whole matter. So since Kurds are also against Sunni. So it is seen that and Syria rebels are Sunnis. So this also is the complication here. Which we will wait and watch what happens actually. So this is the case. Then the next. So we also know that Mosul in Mosul also. Uh, government, uh, the western powers are fighting against Islamic State here. So this Aleppo is not under Islamic State. You can see it's beyond this region. Raqqa is under Islamic State in Syria. Then the next news item is Bitcoin adoption in India sees surge. So this is U Unocoin, an Indian Bitcoin startup company who has developed a new app which will allow customers to buy, sell, send, receive and store Bitcoins. What are these Bitcoins we have already discussed in 14th November news video. It's the last article in the news section. In the last 3-4 minutes, this has been completely discussed. You can go ahead and watch that video. The link has also been provided along with this. So, this bitcoins are not generally accepted by governments. Means they are not recognized by governments, but they are not banned as well. Even Reserve Bank of India had earlier spoken about the volatility of these bitcoins. So, this is not, this cannot be trusted is what RBI wanted to highlight to the people that there are high risks involved in dealing with such virtual currencies, cryptocurrencies. But it, uh, it also said that it is used for money laundering and funding terrorism activities. But it has not banned it as yet. But we can't say what will happen in India. So, we'll have to wait and watch. Presently, this has been established, a Bitcoin startup company. So that is it for today. Thank you so much.